a two-part series. We had Mark on on episode 31 to talk about direct bookings. And I felt like we had to cut it short just because we were we were tight for time. So we connected with Mark and he was like, dude, let's let's do like a 90 minute and we'll break it up into two podcasts and do a deep dive. And uh, so we're super pumped to have him back. I always say like, I look at Mark, like he's the king of direct bookings, man. Like he's like an OG in the space, like E that like grew up before a lot of this stuff went mainstream and just learned and tweaked and developed these processes and these systems on how to turn lookers into bookers, right? That's the phrase that we like to use. So Mark, welcome back, man. And today we're going to go through your kind of your secret sauce here, these five steps. And, yeah. Uh, I'm pumped, man. No, this, this is, this is really good. And I haven't, I haven't shared this for so long. What's up, everybody? My name is Mike Shogren here with my co-host, Emmanuel Pani. We're part of a group of specialized real estate investors you've probably never heard of. We didn't start with deep pockets or wealthy families, and we don't rely on 401ks, mutual funds, or traditional real estate investing. In fact, many of us don't even own the properties that fund our freedom. If you ask the money experts out there, they'd say what we do is impossible, yet it's happening every single day. It's happening through a new niche called short-term rentals. We are Short-Term Rental Nation, and these are our secrets. What's going on, everybody? Welcome to another episode of the Short-Term Rental Secrets Podcast. I am your host, Mike Shogren, here with my main man and brother from another mother, Mr. Emmanuel Pani. What is up, E? What's up, man? And it's so good to see your face. I'm so glad to see Mark's face for once and not just hear his voices in my head through Clubhouse, <laughs> which is also great. Uh, yeah, man, life is good. Um, I'm really excited, man. I'm seeing a lot of our your students, our students, I feel like they're my students too, but they're mostly yours, but like just taking massive action, right? Like our Facebook group has just been absolutely blowing up. People putting up gorgeous properties left and right. Um, I have some local guys down here. They're looking at like a small hotel, motel. And they just, I had no clue what I was doing. I had no mentors when I got started doing this. And it just makes me so happy that we have all of these people that are so far in advance for where we started. Um, but it makes me happy because I'm like, dude, that is awesome. They're like, why buy a single family when we can buy a six black? I'm like, yeah, I agree. Why? Right. So dude, just, I, I get so jacked up just seeing the growth of people and just the vibe in our group is just awesome. Like everybody's just helping each other out and doing deals together or whatever. And yeah. I got a, every Wednesday we have winning Wednesday to celebrate our wins. And, uh, Ken P from, from the coaching program posted that he, uh, he quit his job this week. So within 10 months, man, he was able to get out of his job. Like that stuff lights me up, man. Cause I remember when I was in my job and I was like, I mean, E, you knew me for the last five I years. remember that. It was like call. a three year process for me to yeah. like even figure anything out. And then it was like, yes. I remember, I still remember the phone call. I yeah. remember you taking lunch breaks in the woods and then your, your phone call being like, dude, I'm going in. This is my last day. <laughs> yeah. That's yeah, crazy. So it's, uh, it's pretty awesome. So uh, one thing I do want to make a quick announcement before we get rolling. So I set up a new texting community, which I'm super pumped about. And this is like actual text messages that go to my phone. And so what I'm going to do is I want to invite people to text me their questions. And I'm going to have a new segment uh, between Instagram, Facebook, YouTube called Ask Mike. And I'm going to answer your questions. I'll review your listings. I'll answer any of your short-term rental questions. Um, so guys, save this number. It's 978-321-6563, 978-321-6563. So you just shoot, shoot me a text at that number and um, add me to your contacts and uh, we'll keep the conversation going there. So shoot me questions. You can shoot me voice memos. And uh, I just want to have a new segment called Ask Mike and just give you guys actionable free coaching on a regular basis. And I think it's a really cool way to interact uh, with the guests and the listeners and everything. So will, will, will you know if I text you for questions? Like, does it tell you who the person is? Yeah, you're already can I use it? It? <laughs> <laughs> so without further ado, man, I'm, I'm super pumped to have Mark back on. If you guys don't know today, we've got Mark Simpson. We're going to do a, a two part series. We had Mark on, on episode 31 to talk about direct bookings and, I felt like we had to cut it short just because we were, we were tight for time. So we connected with Mark and he was like, dude, let's, let's do like a 90 minute and we'll break it up into two podcasts and do a deep dive. And uh, 
So we're super pumped to have him back. I always say, like, I look at Mark, like he's the king of direct bookings, man. Like he's like an OG in the space, like E that like grew up before a lot of this stuff went mainstream and just learned and tweaked and developed these processes and these systems on how to turn lookers into bookers, right? That's the phrase that we like to use. So Mark, welcome back, man. And today we're going to go through your kind of your secret sauce here, these five steps. And, yeah. Uh, I'm pumped, man. No, this, this is this is really good. And I haven't I haven't shared this for so long. And as I was saying to you before we, we came on, it was um, I'm, I'm writing my book, my first ever book. It's going to be the Book Direct Playbook. And I've revisited this because this is a bit of training that I did right when I started in 2016. Uh, and it is so important and it's going to play a big part in the book. It could be a book in itself, but it's going to be nestled in nicely. And it was a perfect time to revisit it because uh, it's top of mind. I can talk about it for ages, which is why we're doing it for 90 minutes, but it's so important and it's so key. So I'm really looking forward to digging into it. And if anybody's got any questions on the back end, please do, you know, message me on Instagram um, because it will make its way some way, shape or form into the book because how you respond to this, everybody watching, whether it's now or, or later, will, will really form how it sits in the book. So I'm really, I'm really excited for it. So thanks for having me back on. Yeah. So is this the bit they used to do at your local club on your whiteboard? Is yeah, this the so, original, like the presentation you talked about originally? Well, this, 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 um, this was actually one of the first ever pieces of training that I, I did. It was, you know, when, when I first started the Boostly blog back in 2016, this was one of the first ever blog posts that I, I put out there because it's something that I had studied, researched, and um, I, said, I said on the last one is that I'm, I'm a, like a magpie. So I don't know if we've got magpies over there in America, but a magpie is a very common bird over here in the UK. And they are, they are well known for stealing other birds' nests. So they'll wait for mm. a, a bird to go and uh, lay an egg and they'll go and sit on it and then they'll just take it for their own. So I'm not as, as harsh as that. I don't go stealing other people's homes. But what I do do is I look at what other big companies do really, really well, what they spend millions in research and what they're doing. And I just go in and nitpick and I just go and grab little bits in here and I just sort of bring it all into hospitality. And I just then explain it on podcasts and, and, and to my people and to any host all over the world, because this is, this is like the, the, this is the core essential. If anybody wants to cut away from their relying on Airbnb for bookings and they want to get their own, then they need to master these steps because we're going to basically transform ourselves from the host into the, into the seat of the guest. And this is so key to do. Yeah. It's funny. I was, uh, I was talking to somebody right before we hopped on here and I was looking at some numbers from, one of our projects, right? And annual or over a seven month period, this complex did about half a million bucks, right? And so if I had to pay Airbnb and booking.com 15% on all of that, I want to say the numbers, I forget what the exact amount came out, but it was like $50,000 just in commissions to that platform. So as you scale, maybe you're thinking in your head, oh, it's only 3% or 15%, whatever. But as you scale your business, that is a massive amount of money. I don't care how you slice it and dice it. That's a big chunk of change. Yeah, hundred percent. Oh, it is, and 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 it's and it's not just the revenue. It's the data. It's the power as well. Data is now one of the most valuable commodities out there. And when you have a guest who books through an OTA, Booking.com is a prime example. You don't get the real email address. Um, I know you get the phone number, but I wouldn't be surprised at all if they start to hide that and mask that in some way, shape, or form moving forward. And as well, it's, it's, it's the power. So everything is booked on their terms, you know, Airbnb, booking.com. It's in it, and it, it can be so tilted in the guest's favor. If anything goes wrong or if they want to cancel, it doesn't matter what the policy you have it set in place on there. End of the day, if they want to cancel and whatnot, Airbnb and booking.com will always favor with that guest. So it's, it's, it's so crucial to get this on not just a monetarial level, because like you say, 50,000 is a hell of a lot of money, but also as well in empower in data and just being able to communicate with the guest and then having that guest as your own, which is, which is so powerful. So yeah, this one I'm going to explain and walk you through. It'll set you up nicely. I love it. So why don't we, why don't we start from the high level, talk about what the five five steps are, break down that like framework at a high level, and then we'll dive into it one at a time. And I think what we were saying is we're going to group uh, the first three components into this first episode. 
we'll cut it at that. And then on the next episode, um, we'll talk about part four and five. Now, if you're joining us live on Facebook, if you guys are not in the free Facebook group, you should be in there because we'll be taking questions live and you'll get to hear these podcasts two, three, four weeks before they actually air on iTunes and Spotify. So we stream all these podcasts live into the Facebook group. You can actually see our beautiful faces. You can wave and talk to us and ask us your questions. So Mark, why don't you break down what those five uh, pieces are and then we'll dive into the first one. Yeah, sure. So it's it's all down to, to, to five key components, like we said. So the first one is plan. Then we've got research. Then we've got decide. Then we've got book. And then we've got buyer's remorse. So those are the, the five key things that go through a guest from the point of you know, planning where they want to go, whether it's work, vacation, whatever, and to the point of after the booking, and it's that buyer's remorse. So we're going to walk through all five, like Mike says in the first episode, it's going to be the first three, and it's a nice little segment into the really juicy bits, which is one and two. Now, what I want to do is I don't just want to talk about it, because I want to give you actionable advice that you can actually put into practice that will just knock down all of these barriers along the way. And, And everything that we share with this is going to cost you either nothing or very, 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 very little to actually implement, which is which is really exciting because what I want to see is comments and messages to yourself and like to me later saying, hey, Mark, I did this and it worked. That's that, that's the best news and sort of messages that I, I get. I, I get them on a, on a daily and weekly basis on the tactics that I share. I got one today, an email saying, I tried this. And it worked and it saved me a ton of money. That is phenomenal. So I'm looking forward to hearing all of your messages when, when you get in contact after. Yeah, I love that. And I know I was watching some of the comments from the last podcast. You were giving out some nuggets. And I think it was Ken, ironically, the dude yeah. that quit his job, who yeah. is a massive action taker. He sent you a message and was like, hey, man, I implemented XYZ and it worked, right? Yeah, so, so cool to hear his name because, yeah, it's a, it's a name that is it messages and, and, and say, I did this and it worked. So th- these tactics and tips are tried and tested. This is not just me sort of just talking to myself and going, yeah, I think this might work. This has actually been worked uh, for our family business and it's been replicated and taught and all over the world. So it, it doesn't matter what demographic you are, even though I've got this funny, weird British accent and you're thinking, well, it might just work for him because he's over there. It works everywhere. So um, the main thing is, and, and I will re-emphasize this at every single step of the way during this podcast, is you've got to implement it. You can't just sit back and just go, oh yeah, that's sound. I'll do that next week. I'll do that next month. You've got to take one little thing that you can do right now and put it into practice because it does It does work. So should we kick in with number one? Let's roll. All right. So first stage is plan. And, and again, if, if you're watching this now live with us, or even if you're on, on, on the replay watching on the YouTube, I love watching your podcast on YouTube. I, I'm a big fan of it. That intro just makes my day when I'm, when I'm, when I'm watching it back. But The first step, if you could put it in the comments, is plan. Now, again, everything that we're doing here, we're going to be putting ourselves into our, and we're going to call it a future potential guest, FPG, FPG, future potential guest. You're going to put yourself into their shoes. And if you've ever done this training before where it's, you know who your customer avatar is, all of this becomes so much easy. So if you don't know what an avatar is, it's not the movie. What it is, is it's your imaginary guest. You can give them names if you like, but it's, it, what, what you've got to do is you've got to think of your property, your unit or units, every single one's unique in their own way. And you've got to think of who would you like most to be in this property? And a, if a lot for a lot of people, this is hard. And the most generic uh, sort of smart ass answer that I get back is, whoever's well, going to give me money. And that's not the case because you don't just want that. You can't appeal to everybody. If you appeal to everybody, you appeal to nobody. So it helps with this if you know who your ideal guest is. If not, um, basically get a pen and paper out and just jot down all the characteristics of who you would most like to stay at your property. And we can talk about that later as we go. But plan is the first step. So this is really generic. And you know, bizarrely enough, uh, January is normally the key booking month. So it's where the most bookings come in in the world of hospitality. And I take that in everything, hotels, rentals, guest houses, you know, you name it. This is January is that key month. The reason being is that the end of December, everybody's in their post Christmas hangover. Then they're going to do the new years and they do that. And they wake up on the the January the 1st or January the 2nd, they shake it all off. And that's when 
everybody seems to set their new year goals, but everybody goes, right, where are we going on holiday this year? Where is our vacation? You know, where is that going to be? They get look, they, they look forward to it. And this is what we do as humans, which is why now, and we're recording this, what, February 2021, all over the world, there's different scenarios and situations with lockdowns and people in the houses, not in the houses and restrictions and travel restrictions. As humans, we always like to look forward to something. We, we just naturally have something to look forward to, whether that is a holiday or a purchase or whatever that may be. And we are in the, we're in the industry of making experiences. So what is happening right now, and I guarantee this, I, I, just, I can sense this, my spidey sense is tingling, is that people are planning. Maybe they can't travel right now, but they can plan right now. So, you know, in the UK, big lockdown, people can't really leave their houses as much at the present moment in time. Spain is, is kind of here and there and, you know, everywhere is different. But right now, what is happening? People are looking at where they're going to be and they start their search 99.9% of the time at the same place, which is Google. Now, Booking.com, Airbnb, Expedia Group, they all invest millions and millions and they've got team upon teams in trying to, trying to crack this stage and they do it really well. Now, they've obviously created apps, apps on the phone, apps on the tablet. And what they're hoping is that they're hoping their future potential customers, their future potential guests uh, will bypass Google and go straight to the app. Now, we can't influence that. We can't influence that at this stage. I will add, at this stage, we can't influence that. What you're looking to do at this stage is you're looking to attract those that are still very vague in where they want to go or very vague in where they're going to look. And you're going to try and hit them at the first bit, which is Google. Now, for, for this step, step, what's really important to know is that they may have an idea on where they want to go or they may have an idea in a county or a state or like a, a sort of general area and where they want to go at this stage. So what you have to do, what's really important is that you position yourself in where their eyes will be. Now, I say this all the time. You've got to treat a Google search like your homepage, your homepage of your website. So a lot of people have websites, a lot of people don't. But what's really important at this stage is that the guest or your future potential guest will be typing in some very vague and generic searches. I mean, if you can get to the point where that guest is going on and typing in your business name in your area at this stage, you've cracked it. You've cracked it because your branding is on point. If you can have it where somebody who maybe never stayed with you before or a repeat guest is going in and typing, I want to stay at my business name in your town area, you've cracked it. But we've got to be realistic here. Just because a guest has stayed in your property once doesn't mean that they're going to remember you six to 12 months later. It doesn't mean that they're going to remember your name, especially if your business or your brand doesn't stand out, especially if you haven't been remarketing them with emails and social media posts. You know, that's going to be kind of hard. You know, we, we, we generally assume that they remember our names. You know, they remember our Wi-Fi codes. When in realistic, as soon as they leave our property, when the real world hits and maybe six or 12 months later, they, they go, oh, there's that really cool place that I stayed in, in um, some sink river. And I, oh, fuck it, I can't remember it. So, you know, they, they do the Google search. Now, there may be an instance, there may be an instance at this point where they do remember your name. And for example, for us, it was the Granary Scarborough, the Granary Scarborough. Now, someone could go into Google and type that in. Now, this is where Booking.com, the Expedia Group, TripAdvisor, and now even Airbnb, a sneaky little so-and-sos, because what they do, and they put this in your contract, the contract that nobody reads when you tick it to go, yep, sound, I'll be on your platform, let's leave me alone. They put in the T's and C's that we will bid on your brand name on Google. So what that means is that they know that you aren't going to do this tactic that I'm going to share with you, but it is so powerful. And Booking.com, the Expedia Group, Booking Holidays Group and the Expedia Group are some of the top 10 ad spenders in the world. Now, when I'm not just talking about hospitality. I'm talking about you throwing Coca-Cola, Amazon, and all of those big brands. They're some of the top 10 spenders in the world. Now, that, that may have changed a little bit with COVID, but they still spend a, a hell of a lot of money to make sure that when you run a Google shirt search, especially around hospitality related, they come up at the top on the ad spend. And they're doing it for your brand name. Now, I found this out by 
doing something that um, a friend told me to do years and years and years ago. And you can do it right now for your own business to see if this is happening to you. So what you're going to do, open up a Google search, open up your browser. Now, I use Google Chrome. Now, what you need to do is you need to go to file and you're going to go for incognito mode. It's basically private mode. In, in simple terms, when you run a search on Google, normal Google on your browser, um, Google is tracking everything. It, it saves what's called cookies, not the ones you eat. It just basically means it's saved on your computer because it tracks everything that you do because then it can retarget you and et cetera, et cetera. So by doing it in private mode, incognito mode, I think Safari, it's called private. Uh, other, other systems, just basically it's called private mode. When you do it that way, Google cannot track you because it treats you like you're doing it for the first time. So if you put it into our world, what we're talking about now, it treats you like a guest. And what you're going to do is you're going to run a search for your business name in the area you're located. Okay. Your business name in the area you're located. If you haven't really got a brand name for your short term rental, put the name of your property, the name of your building, whatever somebody would search to find you. And what you'll find is that Google is basically pimping out your brand name to whoever wants it and booking.com, Airbnb. And again, this will differ depending on what the circumstances are in your country, your location, depending on lockdowns. Like um, if booking.com can't take bookings right now due to restrictions, then it won't be spending ad money. It's not silly. It's not going to lose a ton of money. But if they are open, then they will be. And what you want to do here is you want to fight fire with fire. And there's a very cool tip and trick that you can do that will cost you next to nothing, but will just mean that you're at the top of Google every single time. And what you're going to do is you're going to go onto Google, Google ads, create a free account, whack 50 to hundred dollars to your name, and you're going to bid on your own brand name, fight the fire with the fire. You're going to play booking.com, Airbnb, Expedia at their own game. Now, I cannot show you in this very short space of time how to do this, but if you just use this link, it'll take you, it'll take you to a YouTube video, and I've walked you through the step-by-step-by-step. -step -by -step. It's one of my most watched YouTube videos. It's called uh, Boostly, B-O-O-S-T-L-Y dot co dot UK forward slash, all one word, bid on brand. Bid on brand. And if someone could put that in the comments, you'd be a lifesaver. So it's basically a pretty link that will take you to a YouTube video, a free YouTube video, watch it and implement it. So that is how you are going to prevent anybody who's going to put your name in on Google go into an OTA because the booking.coms and the Airbnbs and the likes are really clever. They have tapped into the psychology and they are really powerful because they have got the public to think that by booking via them, the guest saves more money, gets the best rates, get the best incentives, get the best cancellation policy, and it's more safer and secure to book with them. When we all know that's not true. If a guest was to come to me directly and say, Mark, I want to book with you, I'm not going to go, ah, it's more expensive, don't worry about it. It's really crap in the incentives. Actually, go book on booking.com. No, because it's exactly the same because that's how we plug it in. But booking.com and Expedia Group and all of those have made the guests think that it's better to book with them. And they do that in their ad copy, because when you do a Google ad, you can pretty much put what you want in the text. You don't have to rank for SEO or worry about anything like that. So again, the video that I show you shows you how to fight fire with fire and how you get someone to click on you instead of going elsewhere. Now, the plan stage before we move on to research is also key, because what happens if somebody goes in and types in, um, dog friendly accommodation in insert town, or it could be something as vague as hotels in, you know? So there's, there's many different variations and there's many different routes that a guest could go down here. So let's just go down on the most vaguest route, which is basically they've put in hotels in or rentals in or self catering in. These are all what's called short tail keywords, very loose, very vague, very short. Now there's only a few companies that are daft enough to bid on these names, and it's the companies that can spend millions. And again, we all know who they are. You can run a search in your area, booking.com, Expedia Group, Verbo, you know, Airbnb, because they can waste money because, again, they're looking for that brand recognition to someone to, to click in. There's people out there that spend countless of hours, invest tons of money to try and rank number one on Google for their local area. 
And I say this time and time again, yes, SEO can be important. It can work in some way, shape or form, but Google is a business. If you look at the top five listings on a Google search, it's paid allocated spots. Then it's the map pack, the Google maps, which we'll talk about. And then it's Google rich snippets. You could rank number one on Google for accommodation in or short-term accommodation in your town area, and you would still be number nine or 10 on Google search. And heaven forbid if you're on page two, because nobody goes to page two on Google. So what you need to do, and this is where I always say this, I am not anti-OTA. I am not saying you have to bin off all of your OTA listings and you should just do 100% book direct because you're silly if you do that. You need to be present on all of them. Because when somebody does these very vague searches, they're going to go to one of the OTAs unless you've got a ridiculously high marketing budget and you can fight fire with fire, but it never works. I've seen so many people try it. It fails because they've got millions upon billions of ad spend here. So what you need to do instead is to make sure that you are listed on all of them. So again, I've got another video that will help you at this stage. And again, it's a YouTube video, Boostly. And again, if you can put this in the comments, help me out loads. So I don't have to do it later. B-O-O-S-T-L-Y.co.uk forward slash listing sites, L-I-S-T-I-N-G-S-I-T-E-S. That's a 30 to 40 minute exercise. And what it's going to do is to make sure that you appear on the 20% of the websites that appear in 80% of your local searches. So it's really cool because it works on a local level, a state level, and a niche level, because you've all got different niches, you all appeal to different people. Again, that comes back to the custom avatar thing we we're talking about. And then finally, if somebody types in a bit more of a, a specific search term, like for example, um, rental accommodation that takes pets in Boston, rental accommodation that takes pets in Palm Beach, etc. You know, whatever that may be, right? That is what's called a long tail search term. Now, you have got more of a chance to rank for those terms if we're talking about organic SEO, but a shorter, quicker, less time strenuous way is to put a little bit of money behind Google Ads and try and rank for those words. Again, what you need to do is you need to utilize Google here run that same um, exercise that shows you about the list insights. There's a really cool free tool that nobody realizes, but Google tells you what people are searching in your local area. So you could run something and put family-friendly accommodation in your local area. You could even go your state if you're feeling a bit clever. And if you scroll to the very bottom of the first page of Google, you'll notice at the bottom, it says people also search for and it will list off what other people are actually searching for right now in your local area. So you can get a list of 10 to 20 keywords. And what you can do, follow that video and follow the other video where I walked you through how to set up a Google Ads campaign. And you can start running ads on those long tail keywords. Now, the beauty of long tail keywords is that not as many people search for it. You may be getting hundreds instead of hundreds of thousands who will search for the very vague terms. So Google and the likes don't really play in those worlds because they want the big, big searches. They don't want the minimal ones. So what that means is because it's more rare and less people search for it, you spend less per click. So we're talking pennies instead of dollars or pounds, which is really cool because if you look at return of investment, if someone types in at this stage, bearing in mind, this is, the, this is the, only the first stage of plan. If someone at this stage types in something, your website, your business comes right at the very top and they, you can snag them here, then return of investment is amazing, especially if that's like a two or three week booking. And again, if you look at the stats right now, Airbnb trends came out, people are booking bigger units, more people are traveling as a group and they're staying for longer. So again, if you can master this stage and get a two, three, four week booking, return of investment is ridiculous. But again, people don't do this because they don't know about this because Airbnb and booking.com and Expedia group know that you don't do this. So this is why they prey on this, but I'm here to, to show you otherwise. So that's plan. Before I move on to research, is there any little quick questions that for, from, from you guys that I can... No, I, I just want to tell the listeners, this is still the SDR Secret Podcast. Me and Mike are still here. Uh, we're just in classroom as well. Um, I don't... I'm, uh, Mike, how many pages of notes do you have already? Uh, working on two. 
Yeah. So <laughs> anyways, guys, sometimes you got to learn to just let the master speak and just take a seat and just take notes. Uh, so I, uh, I, I didn't tell you, my, my whole goal in these podcasts, when, when I come on these podcasts with you guys is to get E to write more notes than what he wrote on the last one. So the next time I come back, I want like a book of notes, but this is cool. So thank you. No, thank you for having me. I'm enjoying it. I've so had Mark, my water. Go to, on, to quickly recap, to put a frame on, on the planning, right? So understanding who your guest avatar is, uh, then focusing on thinking about what those people are searching for. Again, if you put your mind in the, put yourself in the mind of the traveler, if you're targeting families, it could be family friendly vacation rental in X city or family friendly uh, short-term rental in X or whatever it is. Right. And then you're essentially putting, somewhere around 50 bucks on ads per month to that keyword or a couple different keywords could be five keywords at 10 bucks a piece just to give it a little juice, just so you start to rank a little bit, right? If I follow. That's it. That's, that, that's it. And the the cool thing is at this point is that there'll be people listening or watching this from all different corners of the world and the globe. And this works time and time and time again. One of the biggest frustrations I have, is that when you go into different Facebook groups or different forums and somebody says, I've been approached by this insert list insight. Should I list, should, should I put my business on there to get, to get business? And, you know, before the OTAs came along, before the commission model was so popularized by these guys, the way that we would advertise our businesses would be on these listing sites or in these magazines where you would have to pay a yearly subscription to, to be, to be on there. And, my response all the time is it doesn't matter what somebody over there says on the other side of the country, because this is all based on your local area. It's based on the searches that are happening in your local area, your local county, or your niche, which is really important because everybody has a niche or should have a niche in some way, shape, or form, whether it's families, solo travelers, business guests, corporate guests, the baby boomers, vegans, you know, whatever it may be, if you've got a niche, you've got to play on it. You've got to pray. You've massively got, massively got to, again, it comes back to what we said at the start. If you're trying to appeal to everybody, you appeal to nobody. Like for us, our niche, our family business, it was on a 200 acre farm. If you listen to the other podcast and you heard my story, 200 acre farm in the middle of nowhere, the Yorkshire moors, there's tons and tons of walks, tons and tons of places to go and just get away from the city. Our avatar our ideal guest was just made for it. It's family friendly. It's people who love to get out and explore. This is why our, our tagline was eat, sleep, explore. You know, we, 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 we catered for families. Everything that we wrote, we put down, it was catered for it. So yeah, you, you know it. And then once you know who your ideal guest is, when you do those two uh, videos that I show you, it's so much easier. So the next stage is research. So what part of the psyche is a guest at at this stage? They've done a bit of planning. So at this point, they may know the general area of where they want to be. They may even know the specific location. And, you know, the, the mentality of the guest from, from what I have seen and from, from the research and the studies that's come out since I first put this together has, has, has changed whatnot. But what normally happened And what normally used to happen is that they would go on to say, maybe at this point they're on a listing site. So let's just say they're on Airbnb, which is where everybody knows. Uh, They would run the search in, they'll pick the dates. And then what they'll do then is they'll maybe chuck a couple of filters in. So um, it could be how many beds, it could be have I got Wi-Fi or whatnot. And then they'll have the choices. So this is where they're in the research stage. Now, the only difference that I've seen compared to when I first talked about this four or five years ago is that people would just look down in a very granular order, top to bottom, on the app or on the computer and just look at the options. And then at that point, it's all about how are your images? How is your title? Does it stand out? Does it look different? When everybody's zigging, they use zagging, and we'll talk about that. But now what happens and what I've seen people do and a lot more do is they click on the map. So we click on the map because what happens is, is that people want to be close to either a specific location, the beach, or it could be um, an event, 
a school, whatever. So they, so location does, does play a part in this. But still, when a guest comes to this stage, they're in the research stage. Now, we would be very naive to think that the guest goes through this journey. Guest finds property, guest clicks on property, guest books property. No, 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 no. Especially if it's a vacation. They love to click around. They love to click around so much. Hilton ran a massive campaign with Anna Kendrick from the movies, from the actual movies, where they ran an advert and they said, don't click around, just go straight to Hilton. You know, they, they knew that this is the, 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 the way that we work. We've got 20 different tabs open, got 20 different properties in, in an area, and they're looking at one that's going to stand out. So this is where it's really key that you are speaking to your customer avatar, your ideal guest right from the off. Because at this stage, you could be one of 20 different properties to basically choose from in, in the blunt of a term. So what's really important, and you know, I, what I love about um, the short-term rental world, is, and, and especially like the rent to rent, rent world, is that you learn this better from, say, bed and breakfast owners or, or small hotel owners, is that you know the importance of a good picture, a good photo. You, know, you are not shy of hiring a professional to come in because in the past, and I've seen some shocking ones, my dad, prime example, he would just walk around with his very, very old mobile phone, just taking pictures in rooms, and they just throw it to me and go, that's all right, son, deal with that. And I'm like, no, no, you can't do that. You know, you've got to have proper pictures. And he would post them up. And it's like, no, it's all well and good, but that's, that's not going to work. You know, you've got to get good pictures. So number one, that first image, and we're talking now about the OTAs, you know, the first image on that OTA, the first image that they see on the scroll has got to be your USP, your unique selling photo, as I like to call it. It's the one that's going to draw attention. Now, there are so many comebacks and kickbacks to this. I've had all of them over the years from, oh, Mark, I'm in an apartment block. You know, what can I do to X, Y, and Z? This is where you have to be clever in some way, shape, or form. Now, if you haven't got any distinguishing features, what can you do? And it comes down to a totally different conversation. It could be interior design. You know, this is where, you know, you would maybe get an interior designer on, on and sort of grill them on what they can do to make them stand out. Um, there's a lady called Tanya Masnick, Touch Day. She's part of Touch Day. Fantastic lady. She came onto my podcast to talk about photography tips and skills, but it comes to interior design. So can you be branding your units? Can you be doing something different? So can you be maybe giving it a, a cool theme. Like I've seen some people do unicorn rooms. I've seen some people have real cool wall decals and they brand it and they call it something different, but basically making it Instagrammable. You know, if you go into any, uh, any coffee shop in Bali or anywhere like that, everywhere is Instagrammable because they know the power of, of, of social media and photos and whatnot. And it's the same with this. Our eyes get drawn. So the main advice that I would give before you start painting everything pink and putting unicorns everywhere is look at the listings in your area. Go on Airbnb, booking.com, Expedia, et cetera, and look at what everybody's doing and look at what all the pictures are. And you want to do the filters down so it's similar to your property. Don't try and compare yourself. If you've just got a like a two-bed unit, don't try and compare yourself to a five-bed, like amazing wood-built mansion or whatever. You want to put it somewhere similar and look at what everybody else is doing because at the end of the day, the guest is going to already put those filters in. Two bed, for example, if you've got a two bed, um, X, 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 Y, and Z. And what you're going to be looking to do is make sure that that first picture is something that stands out. When everybody zigs, you zag. And again, with Airbnb compared to booking.com, the Expedia group, you've got the amazing ability that you don't get on any others is that you can amend your title. And again, so many people go wrong on this and they just put in the bog standard two bed shitty center location no they know it's too bad because they've done it on the filter so you've got to stand out in some way shape or form tap into here your ideal guest so think if you're your ideal guest your your customer avatar what your property is all about whether you've got the best wi-fi in town whether you've got a workaway location whether you've got sea views from where you are whether you've got 
whether you do something a little bit special, will you give welcome hampers, coffee and tea hampers, like literally to, 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 to any guest, like a welcome pack. Try and get that into your listing. Now, the most easiest way to stand out in the past until they cracked down on it was emojis. Airbnb officially didn't allow emojis, but they allowed emojis. Try and get your head around that one. So I would totally take advantage of this like I'd try and do with any situation. I'd just throw up those love heart emojis, those sparkling emojis, whatever you could to stand out. But then everybody found out and everybody was doing it. So then it was just pointless putting emojis in because every other body was doing it in your area. But it, you know, it comes down to copy and writing and description. Now, the research stage is, is key because it's what you put here and how you promote yourself online will be very, very key to who books with you. And again, when we talk about getting those people to your website and getting those people to come to you directly, a lot of it is down to Google. So we talked very briefly in step one about the Google map pack. And um, what I basically mean by that is the Google business listing. Now, Google business listing is a free tool. So many people don't utilize it to its full potential, but you can list every single one of your properties, every single one of your units on Google business listing, and it is free. And the reason why it's powerful and popular is that so many people aren't doing it. Now, what you're able to do is to make sure when someone does a search in your local area for a, a vacation rental or a hotel or whatever, is that you will come up on that first page of Google within, within the maps. And what's even more powerful is that every single car, every single phone is fitted with Google Maps. And what they're able to do is if you do it right, is that your listing will stand out and it'll actually be visible on the map as well. When they're checking out a local area, when they're in the car navigating to somewhere, shape or form, you'll be able to be visible on there as well. And what I've seen with this and what people that have got a multiple portfolio do really well is they'll give each name, each unit, an individual title. Uh, like, for example, our properties was Cowslip, Foxglove and Primrose. These were local flowers in the area. And we didn't just call it Cottage 1, Cottage 2, Cottage 3 or Flat 1, Flat 2, Flat 3. We actually branded it and named it. So when somebody goes on to the Internet and they'll maybe search for Foxglove Cottage in this certain area, because of Google business listing, it would come up. And then what we do is we give the brand in brackets on every Google business listing. So it's Foxglove Cottage, the granary. So the granary is the business name and it's the individual unit. So what you're doing at this stage in the research stage is that you're basically trying to stand out to your ideal guest at every single shape or form so you can catch the eye. Because it's very naive, like I said, to think that guests will just find you, they click on it and go, brilliant book. It doesn't work like that. There's, even if even if you make it down to the last three, you've still got to make sure that, 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 that you stand out. So the research stage is, is really important. And I know we said we'd go through three in the first episode, but I can see that we've already gone 45 minutes talking about the first two. So what would we like to do for the other three? Are we going to just put a little pause on or are we going to keep going? Why don't we finish up the third one? This episode will be a little bit longer and then maybe episode two will be a little bit shorter because I do want to put a bow. I think the first three are a good fit to go together. They are a good fit. And I do apologize. I do go on, but I'm passionate about it. No, this is good, man. I I love this stuff. And again, like E said, we're just kind of staying quiet because again, we wanted you to come on. We both know you, know, like, and trust you, and you're really good at what you do. So we're all about just adding value to the audience. So I want to let you roll, man. And I hope everybody is enjoying it as well. And if, if you are, please, you know, let us know in the comments, any questions, because the cool thing about this is that I learn every time talking about this as well, because when people tune in from different areas of the world or different niches and different scenarios and what, they always pick up something and they give it to me. So please do get in touch. Please like, reach out on Instagram like Ken did. Like Ken literally made my year last year by doing that because it's, it's the first time that I sort of ventured really into the world of America and, you know, this whole world. So it's cool to be able to know that what I talk about works elsewhere. So please do. So decide. So again, let's bring it back to the scenario. Number one was plan. Planning was starting the search of where they're going to stay, whether it's work, business, pleasure, whatever. Then we talked about the research. So it's how can you make your business stand out when they're in the actual research stage? So they may have a date at this point. They may have an an area in mind on where they want to go. How can you stand out? Now it comes to the decision part. 
This is where they're sort of getting ready with the credit card or they're sort of getting ready to message the partner, you know, because at the end of the day, I'm married. If I book it, book a place to stay without messaging my wife and I'm going to get it in the neck. So again, this is like, this is the decision stage of the process. It's like, right, I've, I've, I've maybe been searching for about an hour now, 90 minutes, tons of potential. I've narrowed it down to maybe a couple. This is where I'm going to make the decision. And this is really important. This is so key to this whole process. I would say three and four are the most crucial parts of this whole five steps because what you've got to do here is you've got to eliminate as many barriers as possible to the point of booking in a very short space of time. So what are they looking for here? They're looking at price. They're looking at policy. And you know you could even throw in a third in this current climate that they're at, which is safety. So what can you do? What can you say? How can you say it that will basically knock down those barriers as soon as possible? Now, pricing, bearing in mind, when I started this in 2016, this was a nightmare, a nightmare, because there wasn't amazing pricing tools like there are today, like Wheelhouse, Price Labs, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So tools like that will automate this to make sure that you are not overpricing yourself or underpricing, massively underpricing yourself all the time. And again, if you don't know what either of those are, just go and check them out. They are yeah. check amazing. out the podcast because we had Price Labs on. God, I can't remember, but if you just search for yeah uh, short term rental secrets, go through. You'll find the episode we did with Verna um, from Price Labs. So yeah, interact. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah I say they, they they do the podcast round, so they are good guys. They they, they all do, it and you can easily go and find out more. And again, just just check them all out and just decide one who's best for you. So pricing is not an, is not an issue anymore because if you use them and you use them well, and everybody should be doing dynamic pricing in 2021. Like our errors that we used to make back in the day. This is how simplistic we were when when me and my parents would sit down at the start of every year and we talk about pricing. It was always the same. Let's just put it up a pound put it one pound. It's ridiculous thinking back of it because we didn't want to annoy anybody who booked in the past, but we wanted to make sure that we're you know, progressing. But to buy, do it by a pound, I cannot even begin to think the amount of lost revenue that we used to have by doing it in the most simplistic, stupidest way possible. So this is why tools like this have been coming in. But I still know so many people who aren't using pricing tools and it hurts me. There's two key things in 2021 that everyone should do. Get a pricing tool and get a digital guidebook. And we'll talk about digital guidebooks later. So to decide, pricing. Second is the policy. Now, there have been tons of sentiment studies being run from April 2020 right up to now, and it's keeping in check with the mindset of the current traveler. And there are two key words that stand out time and time again, and I've mentioned this so much since last April, is there's two things that's stopping people from um, potentially hitting the trigger, pulling the trigger, making a booking right now. One is policies, as in cancellation. Two is safety. We'll cover safety in a second. So policy, uh, cancellation. If I book a stay with you now and I want to arrive on June the 1st, how confident am I that I'm going to actually be able to come or am I going to have to cancel? Because there's so many different variables that could affect it. I could get COVID. I could, there could be a travel restriction come up. There could be a travel ban come up. You know, literally anything could potentially happen right now that we didn't have to worry about when I first created this, this, these steps. You know, we literally didn't have to worry about it this time next last year. You know, this is like February the 11th. It was only March onwards that it really started to affect us. And we've had to bring this into to, to our marketing because this is what the guest is thinking about right now. And you are going to have to think about it for at least the next year, at the minimum, you know? So cancellation policy, what can you do? And at the end of the day, what I say here does shock a lot of people. It does shock a lot of people because as business owners, especially when you're doing rental accommodation, it's not like you're running a 200, 300 bed hotel that you can potentially do this, but this is where rental accommodation people have to start learning from the hotels. Uh, and I've just done a, a video on this for Hostfully on this very topic. And what we need to do is we need to put everybody's minds at ease. And the main thing that everybody can do at this stage is the worry-free cancellation policy. Now, I'm not going to tell anybody how to run their business before you start 
commenting and at me and telling me that I'm a knobhead by saying this, but what you need to be doing to get that booking, to stand out from the crowd when everyone's zigging and, and, you're, and you're zagging over here and everyone's got real strict cancellation policy, what can you do to be super flexible? What can you do to go, you know what, Mr. Guest? We're cool. Up to 24 hours, 48 hours before arrival, then, you know, you can cancel free of charge. Now, before you come in at me and with literally forks and knives and daggers saying, I'm trying to run a frigging business here, what you're doing, wait for number five, because number five will eradicate any mishaps. And I will talk about this in a second. But what can you do in your policy to make the guest minds at ease? And all you've got to do is look at the big boys and how they're doing this. And I take Disneyland as an, accept, as an, as an example of this. Me, my wife and my three boys, uh, and I can say this because I'm not in earshot of the boys. We had booked to go and have Christmas at Disneyland Paris last Christmas. And we had it all booked. And their website was fantastic. Every single step of the way, every single step of the booking process, they told me in, in, in absolute certainty, Mark, it doesn't matter what happens. You can cancel your stay at any, any time. You can change the dates, cancel your stay. There'll be no fees, no cancellation, no, no fines for you. And that just automatically, because when you book a Disney, that's a pretty big investment. You know, we're talking a couple of grand here, you know, and it was, it was, you know, it's for Christmas. It was going to be, it was going to be insane. But as we all know, travel restrictions came in and France shut down and Spain shut down, borders shut down. We couldn't go. And it got to, you know, up to mid-December and we, we had to cancel. Disney were fantastic at every single step of the way. They fully refunded. They gave us discounts for future stays, X, Y, and Z. And that's what the big boys are doing. And then it's not the only ones. You look at the Marriott, the Hiltons, and you look at, you know, look at everything. And before you say, well, Mark, that's not rental accommodation. This is what businesses are having to do right now. You're having to do things a little bit different. You can't just reminisce about the good old days because that just doesn't work in business. Amazon, Mr. Jeff Bezos said it himself. If you're not moving forward, then you're falling backwards. And this is how you've got to plan with the time. So what can you do with your cancellation policy that will put a guest at ease? And if you can do that well, and if you can really do that well, then that is how you stand out in the decision-making process. And the final thing is safety. Safety, safety, safety. Now, we've all done an amazing job to get our properties um, basically COVID-friendly. You know, you, you've done all the things, the cleaners have are doing all the things. And, you know, these OTAs are making you jump through all the frigging hoops to get to this stage. But, you know, everybody's done this well. The problem is, is that we're not talking about it. We have to talk about it because it, for a lot of people, they don't care. But for a lot of people, they do still care about this kind of thing. Because at the end of the day, this is something that is important to them, to a lot of people. And, you know, you may think that they don't, but in the back of the mind, they do. So again, if your properties have, have gone through a very rigorous cleaning, talk about it, have it as one of those first six pitches. It's mental me saying this with the marketing hat on of everything that I teach. I would never have said two years ago in the first six pitches, you would have to put an example of the cleanliness procedures that you're doing, but that is just ridiculous. That's how you have to do it now. It's again, it will put someone's mind at ease. Um, so this is, like I say, this is the decision process. Anything that you can do at this stage to turn a looker into a booker, to put it into your advantage is going to be key. And again, you can even, if we're going to bring it more closer to home, direct bookings, when it comes to your website, you may all have a website, you may not, but if you do have a website, even having something like a live chat option on your website can be so crucially key. 76% of people mentioned in a survey that they would reach out and contact the property directly if they were um, had a question, a final question before making a booking. And the, 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 the shocking thing for me, looking at, I look at so many websites with what we do, is that so many people don't have that option. If you want to get in contact with them, then you have to email. Now, we all know the psyche of where we are in, our, in, you know, in, in the modern age. Everybody wants things like that. Amazon Prime, Uber, you know, food takeaway deliveries, you name it. Everybody wants it in an instant. This is why, and if you want a, a real world example, a couple of years ago, Airbnb used to be inquiry only. You had to go find a listing on Airbnb. You had to send off a request wait for a response for a booking to come in. That's how Airbnb, HomeAway, all of these guys used to work. Then 
they flicked on instant book. Now everything is instant book. When you create a listing on Airbnb, they hammer instant book down, 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 literally down your next two, because that's where everybody's going, because that's the way the world is going. So if you're still in the past of on your website, if someone's got a question, you don't put your phone number. You have to make them email you and wait for a response. Just imagine that. You're missing out on so much revenue because no one's going to send an email and they'll go, right, yep, I'll wait for maybe 10 minutes for an answer. 24 hours goes by, 48 hours goes by, 72, 72 hours comes by and they will, you, will, you will never hear from them. They'll go somewhere else like that. So what can you do? Live chat um, is, is, is the easiest form. There's a, there's a tool called TWAK, T-W-A-K. Uh, it's really cool. Um, it works with, with, with all devices and, and, you know, it's, 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 you've got an app on your phone and all the things, the most simplest and free and easy thing to do right now, you can put a little button and it can just ping straight into your WhatsApp. So there's a really cool short code. Um, so a hyperlink on a website is when anybody's on your website, for example, and, uh, a, a hyperlink is which, which will take them to somewhere else. So it'll take you to the booking page or it'll take you to a podcast page. It's, you know, it's www.boostly.co.uk. That's a hyperlink. A short code is something that you can put in. And, and a lot of the times it's the mail one. So you took mail to dot marketbooster.co.uk. But you've also got a, a WhatsApp short code, which is really cool. So it's WA dot dot, then put your, your full mobile number, including country code. And you can grab a cool little icon. You can grab the WhatsApp icon. Uh, you can even get a floating widget. You know, there's plugins, there's all of these things. And when they tap on that, it goes straight into your WhatsApp number. So they can send you a text, send you a voice note. You know, if you've got WhatsApp for business, then you've got the automation and stuff. But what you have literally at your disposal, and, you know, you, know, you can either send it to you, or if you're lucky enough to have a team doing this, then it can go straight to them. But it just means that you've got that, extra X factor that somebody else may not. So if they're looking at you, whether it's in an OTA or in a direct booking mode, and if they've got a question, which everybody has questions all the time, then you can answer them. And another thing that so many people aren't doing, but now Google insists on, if you want to rank higher in the search, have a FAQ page on your homepage of your website an FAQ page. And again, this is so simple. Again, it's just looking what everybody else does. And you don't have to come up with questions. Just literally look in your emails, look in your Airbnb messages, look in your whatever messages, the last 100 people, 10 people, and just pick out the 20% of questions that get asked 80% of the time. Most of it can be parking, arrival times, or anything. So you'll, you'll gather them. And again, if you look at any Boostly website, you will notice on the homepage we have an FAQ. Because like I mentioned, in Google search, there are a lot of deciding factors before they even get to the organic search results. And I said, adverts comes top, then it's maps, and then it's a thing called rich snippets. And what rich snippets is, is that Google now are basically trying to answer everybody's question on the first page of Google. You could type in, how do I chop up a tomato? Uh, you know, what time is it in X, Y, and Z? And the result will come on the homepage so you don't even have to click in. And that's an FAQ. And how powerful would it be? And if you can think about it, how you can in, in like implement it into your area. And as a, as a great guy who's fantastic at SEO, he lives close to me in Spain. He's called Damien Sheridan. He's founder of the Book Direct Network. And he's, a, he's an absolute amazing guy at SEO. He was able to take advantage of this and he was able, and he realized, and he could see from the patterns that there was a lot of people in his area asking for bus routes or car routes or bus routes or carpool lanes or anything like that. So he answered that question on his website, knowing that people asking the question about bus routes were people who were looking to vacation in his local area. And guess what happened? They saw that rich snippet come up, they clicked on, and they saw it was for staying at a vacation rental. He got so many bookings from that search term, mental search term. But again, it was the deciding factor and it was, it was there at the decision-making. So again, there's so many ways to do it, but the main key ways to, to, to figure out this and to get your head around this is what can you be doing at this stage that will knock down all the barriers that will get you a booking that no one else is doing? When everybody's zigging, how can you zag? So that's decide and that's plan, research, decide, and we're going to move on to the other two in the, in the next episode. Love that. Well, 
folks, make sure that you tune in next week. If you're tuning in live, we're going to get right into it in just a second. So that's why you guys got to make sure that you join the free Facebook group, Short Term Rental Secrets. Um, but again, thank you, Mark, so much for being here. Can't wait to continue this conversation. So we've gone through three out of the five plan, research, decide. And now we're going to step into the fourth one. So we'll see you guys next week. Signing up. Hey, STR Nation, if you enjoyed this episode, please make sure to hit that subscribe button and leave us a review. And in the comments, let us know what topics you want us to cover on upcoming episodes, and we'll make sure to get that in the books for you. And if you really want to learn how to launch, automate, and scale your short-term rental business, if you want to go deeper, then check out our free masterclass at strsecrets.com.